Yeah, thank you for coming. Uh, the RubyConf is always great. And in uh, the keynote, make me depressed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm a programmer. I'm a language designer. So, you know, my, my main task should be uh, designing language, great language. I admit that I did great things that I, you know, that influenced so many people all around the, around the world, including you guys. So I'm pretty happy with it. But still, you know, the, <laughs> I'm not really a great presenter, and then, nor, you know, the guy, I'm very, no, not, not really good at English. So, <laughs> well, that, that always makes me nervous. Anyway, today, <laughs> I'm going to talk about uh, the fantasy land. Oh, this way. Okay, fantasy land. Uh, that is a place being away from reality, the way the unicorn lives. So in, in Japanese, it's, it's called genjitsu tohi, which is escaping from reality. So I, my dictionary says that is escapism. So is, is this the correct word or something? So for example, so the starting cleanup right before the deadline is kind of like an escapism. Yeah, Just starting debugging MRuby right before the keynote is escapism. <laughs> That's what I did. So today, uh, I, I'm going to talk about, uh, oh, excuse me, two fantasy lands. The, the first one is kind of like a dystopia. In 1919, where, why? I graduated from university. I feel old. <laughs> I was hired by a software de development company which does which did some kind of enterprise software. And then in that, that age, the software development is totally different from, from now. So we had some kind of the three-year project or something from the huge company or huge government dis, uh, department. So we had some kind of the uh, analysis for the months or even years then we wrote some kind of the very detailed documentation, the abstract documentation, the detailed documentations. Then we code, the, which is the translation from natural language to computer language. So the process was driven by waterfall process. So the company's decision was very, very, very conservative. So. That, at that time, I felt something was wrong, but I couldn't explain why. Just because, you know, it was so natural. So everyone was doing that way in software development back then. So I, I couldn't explain why. Everyone was doing that. So it's quite difficult to tell, the, tell what is wrong when everyone is doing those things, right? So. Yeah, I, I couldn't imagine what was right and what was wrong. So, but, so after more than 20 years of experience, I was a pretty experienced programmer, uh, maybe. I, I now understand. I now understand what was wrong. We were wrong in software development that, that depends on some false assumptions. So we, are dep we were depending on such false assumptions. Assumption number one, we know what we make. Back then, we believed we are knowing what we, we are going to make. In reality, we don't know what software is. So software does not have any physical entity. So it, it does not really that by physical law. So it can be very, very easily the complex. So, for example, if I were a 
uh, building architect. So I designed a building, like a, this hotel. So, so we need to uh, think about, for example, about the weather or the, the, the strength of the concrete or uh, iron, uh, something. <laughs> the building materials. So then the, the, the strength of the building itself can be uh, calculated by physically, easily emulate, simulated. But you know, the, when we are starting developing software, it is quite easy, like a hello world, yeah, that's quite easy. There's no room to bug. But the software is getting bigger and bigger so it's quite difficult to understand, uh, say, 10,000 lines of code. But nowadays, software is so huge. Like, a, like, we ha like if I had a Prius here, it is, a, it's, it is an um, automobile, but it has tons of lines of code, maybe hundreds of hundreds of thousands of code, maybe millions of code. So, it's quite, as a software developer, it's quite difficult. Uh, you can imagine how difficult to ensure no bugs in the millions of lines of code. Yeah, I'm sure I cannot do that. <laughs> so the software can be most complex creation, maybe. And then, no document, but code can explain the detail. So the, we believed we knew what we are going to make, but in reality, we didn't. False assumption number two, which is we know what we want. In reality, it's quite difficult to imagine. Like, a, you know, the, I, in a waterfall age, I write that some kind of the specification and then give the, that specification to, the, to our client. Then clients said, okay. Then we started development. The few weeks, few months, few years later, so the software was finished. Then I brought it, we brought it to the client. Then can you imagine what client said? It's not what I wanted. <laughs> but they said, yes, they said, okay. But afterwards, they said, this is not what I, what I wanted. Even say, even I admit I said, okay. But, you know, I could, we couldn't imagine what the software appears in, a, in reality. So, uh, like a stupid bosses, <laughs> stupid bosses, stupid clients. <laughs> and it, yeah, I complained a lot. I happened it's pretty so often back then. But uh, one day, I asked my colleague to, to create some kind of software. At that time, I was so busy. So I, uh, I explained what I want to my colleague. Then he created the software, then back to me. And I said, this is not what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid me. I said, I don't know what we should make to maximize business value. So we couldn't know, we couldn't understand what is going to bring you success. So, so we are stupid too. So false assumption number three, which is the situation will not be, will not be changed. In reality, we don't know what, we don't know the future. So when our profits, we have wrong forecasts. So we have, yeah, in, in this, this uh, technology field, we have a lot of, uh, okay, next we're going to have this, this technology, we're going to have this, this tool, we're going to be uh, conquer the world. Or the, the most forecasts will, will, would be wrong. So let's face it, we don't know anything. 20 years ago, we should have admitted our ignore, ignorance, but we couldn't. Instead, we ignored our ignorance. So when we knew no little, 
we have very few choices. So choices number one is a conservative strategy. Learn from the past. So this, this is very good strategy, and the politicians often take conservatism. But it is pretty good unless factors don't change. Unfortunately, not in the IT industry. So we changed a lot. The situation will change drastically day by day. So in our, tech, our industry, so it's, it's kind of like a, the, the quote from Red Queen in the Alice Wonderland. Alice Wonderland. Now, here you see it takes all the running you can do to keep in the same place. If you want to get somewhere else, you must run at least twice as fast as that. Yeah. It's our situation. Yeah, it probably, uh, yeah, it's our situation. We have to run as fast as, as, as we can to be in the same place. So the strategy number two is ostrich algorithm. <laughs> uh, do you know ostrich algorithm? So when the sandstorm comes, ostriches dig in their heads into the sand and wait until the sandstorm ends. So the, the ostrich strategy is ignore everything and wait. This is a good strategy. <laughs> <laughs> Only when situation will recover. So sandstorms will, will end. So the, we will have the clear skies, and we, the, we can enjoy our uh, climate again, weather again. But you know, in, in our industry, that's not what happened. The weird situation will change and change and change and not recover. So we, we cannot go back to the, you know, the mainframes. We cannot go back to the, the you know, 8-bit CPUs or something. So we, we must keep forward, keep going forward. So the ostrich algorithm is very good strategy in the past. In the, when the situation will recover. So the, this strategy, this algorithm, is written in our instinct. So we are real, so easy to choose that tech, uh, uh, strategy. But, uh, the, but otherwise, the, when the situation will not recover, it's kind of like a living in the fantasy land. So going forward with false assumption is kind of like a living in the fantasy land. So ignoring reality. So, so the, we had two strategies, conservative strategy and ostrich strategy, algorithm. Uh, which strategy did we take? Or neither of them not good. 20 years ago, uh, our goal was to, to create the software somehow. Having computerized systems is the power so it is so powerful. The computer itself is so powerful comparing to the human uh, calculation. So the, it's the great power. So software development was pretty expensive back then. The computers were expensive. The network connection was expensive. The failure never be allowed in that age. So they needed to optimize not to fail at the cost of satisfaction. So I don't care you, you satisfied our, our software or not, but I can bring you some kind of the power of computers with, with the computerized system. So everyone was dreaming. We believed that the only way to create software, oh, we tried how to believe that was the only way, but the 20 years later, now, a goal is not really Cre not just create the software. Our goal is to create the great software. You know, now, nowadays, everyone has a computer, everyone, has, everyone uses software, so mere position 
is now no longer the power. Everyone has a computer, everyone has software, so we are the same. So to differentiate, to have the power over others, we need to create great software. We need great software. We got to create great software. So, but how? Of course we don't know. We, we admit false assumptions. But I admit our ignorance. But there's, there's good news. There's good news. The computer is cheaper. Uh, cloud computing is even cheaper. A network connection is cheaper now and ubiquitous. Everyone has net connection, even in this room. So software development is cheaper comparing to 20 something years ago. So we can be more productive, more abstract, and we now have better tools and a better language, <laughs> like Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> And we have a lot of open source software, so we can rely on that kind of software. We can learn from that software. So the few the old days, it is quite difficult to the study from the real source, uh, source code. It's, you know, if, if you would like to learn about the, uh, the operat operating system, so you cannot act access to the source code of, say, Microsoft Windows, or the Sun or Solaris, or some other operating system. But you, you can access to uh, Minix, or the very old version of Unix, but not, not the real software. But nowadays, you can access to the Linux, whole bunch of Linux code, and. Uh, you, you, you have tons of operating system in, that is used in reality. And then, okay, okay you, can, you can use open source software in your system. You can learn from the uh, open source source code. So it's, it's much easier for us to learn and create the great software. And then we can now have the collaboration via internet. It's, it changed the game. So the 20 years ago, soon after I graduated this university, I was, when I was working as a professional programmer in enterprise soft, software, uh, I was prohibited to, to write email to abroad, outside of Japan. Only two, 20 years ago, not, not 200 years ago. <laughs> so, yeah, I, when, I was a, when I was a university student, I wrote some kind of free software. So it was uh, distributed by, uh, it is quite a minor uh, email client on, on top of Emacs Lisp. Uh, and uh, I got, I got ma uh, mail from some other guys probably in the States. I, I don't remember quite. But, and uh, I tried to reply. But soon after that, I got error mail. Your company did not, uh, did not pay money to the internet connection. Uh, international internet connection, I mean. So <laughs> I, I forwarded that, that reply to my friend in the university. <laughs> the, 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 my uni uh, university paid that, that kind of bill so that he could receive the mail. It was quite uh, awkward corresponding. You know, he wrote mail to me, then I cannot respond, so that can friend friend respond instead of me or something like that. But you know, now we can connect to the uh, everyone all over the world, so we can access to the uh, Japan, China, uh, Moscow, or so, anywhere, everywhere. So we can now collaborate over the internet. So that allows us to do some kind of social coding. So, so GitHub changed, uh, changed everything. So these good things uh, bring us the new fantasy land, the new perspective. So now we can ignore about the gory detail of the 
hardware or the, the underneath operating system for most of the cases. We can stand on the shoulders of giants. So we can use the great, huge software, uh, operating system, frameworks, language, the tools, editors, and the, so a lot of things. So we can do great things uh, with very little effort comparing to the past. So we can, we can do greater works uh, than our real ability, real power. We are, so I think the engineers 20 years ago is not, is, does not weaker than us, does not stronger us. They are almost the same, the ability as a human, engineers. But now we can rely, we can corroborate. We can corroborate over internet. We can corroborate o, uh, on top of open source software, free software. So we can do greater works than our past. But that, that does not mean we are greater. So the situation has changed. We can have power. We can have more freedom. The, we can have more joy in software. So I remember that the, the, working on the enterprise software was no fun. So it's quite boring. So translating human uh, the specification in human language into the, uh, the computer language was so boring. You know, the, the specification once said, that, OK, assign this value to this, this variable or something like that. So why these kind of engineers don't write the code by themselves? <laughs> <laughs> it was quite boring when I was pretty young. So now we can do by ourselves. We can have joy in our program. So it's kind of like an engineer's heaven. Uh, that's what we are. And that's why we are here. But wait. It's still not real. We, in re reality is as complex as past. So who made in the fantasy land? In reality, we cannot just ignore mess. So we don't need something. So just we tend to ignore so and then throw out, just forget. But, but something got to maintain this kind of the mess. So it's so somebody got to work on that kind of mess. Garbage collectors. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not the garbage collector you imagined. For that, so that kind of topic, you can go to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For each is talk. So by the term garbage collector, I meant this. And that we have to rely on this kind of people in our daily life, even in our programming. Without them, we would have mess. <laughs> so welcome to, to back to the digital reality. <laughs> we rely on garbage collectors. So be, we better appreciate them. We, have, we, we rely on a lot of garbage collectors. So if we keep the fatness land. Who created your favorite language? <laughs> the garbage collector. <laughs> or who created your favorite gems? Gem creators, raise your hand. You have to appreciate them. Thank you. Who created your favorite frameworks? Who wrote your favorite books? Book writers, raise your hand. <laughs> Forget your favorite your open source software. We have tons of open source software in and out of the Ruby community. So we have to appreciate them. So appreciation and respect is the key. 
I believe. The key to the, op op to the open source community, the key to the moving forward. So uh, open source community is kind of like a shark. <laughs> we need to keep moving forward or die. So we have to, and we ad I advise you, keep moving forward. So you have to run as fast as you can to stay in the same place. And then you have to run twice as fast as that <laughs> to move it forward. So run fast. Try often. Fail early. Keep moving forward. Yeah, that is my message. And in addition, appreciation is not enough. So we are not created to the gem writers. <laughs> we are not created to be a language designer. We are not created to be a open source, uh, uh, open source software programmers. So we became one. So take the red pill. <laughs> so you can come join us. If you're a programmer, that's fine. You, 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 uh, that's fine you're a programmer. You took a great step to create something. You know, the programmer is a creator. So you create software, then by your creation, the world will be better, I hope. <laughs> I will really, really hope. The world will be better by your creation. You programmers, you create softwares, and you, you make the world better, but, but you st might still live in the fantasy land, who, which is kept by the garbage collectors. And uh, if you're willing, I'm not forcing you, if you're willing, you can be one of them. You can be a garbage collector. You don't want? <laughs> but this garbage collector is much cleaner. <laughs> so be a garbage collector. Take part in keeping the fantasy land. So this fantasy land, unlike the, the first one, which ignores everything, so this, this fantasy land we country enjoy is a result of the uh, effort of the long time, maybe 20, 40, 50 years of the, the great effort of the garbage collectors. So I, I invite you guys to take part in, to, in keeping the fantasy land. And, and the, for example, so you can join the development of theory, even in the writing, writing some uh, reporting some issues to the bank truckers or something like that. And uh, so the, to know what we garbage collector doing behind the zero B, you can check the <laughs> <laughs> that session. So, okay, so I, ask you to create a great fantasy land. Currently we enjoy it, and it, it can be even greater with your effort. So you can do many things, so writing uh, software on top of the Ruby on Rails or the Sinatra or something like that, that enrich the Ruby community, and then communicate with uh, blogs, Twitters, and uh, social, social net uh, encoding, uh, social coding, or, the, or even uh, participate in the community, like uh, the GitHub is our friend. Or you can do many things: submit bugs, write documents, and uh, you know have a presentation in the conference, and you can, or write write a small piece of software and uh, write a patch and uh, submit a pull request. So so many things you can do, but in any way create and keep, try to keep 
a great country land that we enjoy. Change the world. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> change the world. <laughs> so I, I believe we've changed the world in a better way in the past, say, 10 years. So a lot of people in this conference, in the past will be conferences, so presented the great things. And uh, I expect the, uh, even more uh, great work uh, would, will be introduced in, the, in this conf sessions in, the, in this conference. And then, so do not be a, just a listener. Do, do not be a passive uh, receiver of information. So you hear, the, the, you hear something in this conference. You learn something. Take action. So change the world. So this is the key of the open source community. And this is the key of the Ruby community. So I, I know myself. I'm not a great programmer. So the, the, especially the Ruby committers, the, our, my colleagues, uh, knows I'm not a great programmer. I, I create so many bugs. <laughs> <laughs> but, but still, I could. I did a great job that influenced the uh, uh, world. And uh, I, I respect myself by changing the world better. So I believe you can do that too in some ways, you can do. So change the world. Thank you. Thank you.